Ho, 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 Merry Advent. It's not Christmas yet, okay? But we are getting ready for Christmas, and we are preparing for Christmas by watching a bunch of woke Christmas TikToks. TikToks. Take it away. Here are some Christmas traditions that we borrowed from pagans, and by borrowed I mean stole, and then condemned, and then rebranded. Number one, Santa Claus. Uh, Santa Claus is actually an old Norse pagan god named Odin, and Odin had a long white beard, and he was old, and he rode around through the sky on an eight-legged horse delivering presents to people. Let me put a buzzer. Uh, Santa Claus, also known as Jolly Old Saint Nick, is not a pagan god named Odin. Uh, Santa Claus is a saint named Nicholas. That's why we call him Saint Nicholas. And he was said to have given presents to little kids. And what he was also known for was, according to legend, slapping the heresiarch Arius at the Council of Nicaea. The story, probably apocryphal, but legends can tell us a lot about uh, reality as well. It helps you when, when you're talking to people who say, we're going to debunk Christianity. Did you know did you know that there's a similarity between this thing that happened in the Gospels and some myth? Therefore, the Gospels are fake, and it's all just a repackaging of a pagan myth. No, no. Christianity is mythical in the sense that it partakes of types. It partakes of grand narrative. It happens to be, however, the true myth. It is a myth that actually happened. Yes, it is mythical for a man to die and then rise from the dead. That's a theme in myth. It also literally happened Surprise, in Christianity. So just because something is mythical does not mean that it can't be true. Number two, the 12 days of Christmas or the concept of Christmas in general. This comes from Yule or winter solstice, which is a 12 day pagan winter holiday. No, put a pause there. That's just so fake. You are fake news. They bring up all these different pagan feasts, many of which started after Christmas, by the way. The one that they usually go back to is Sol Invictus, but there are others. She mentions Yule, but there's Sol Invictus, there's Mithras, there's Saturnalia, there are all these feasts. People will say, well, the Christmas holiday was celebrated by the Christians as a way to lure the pagans who were celebrating Sol Invictus over to celebrate their new holiday, but that's not true. The earliest uh, evidence we have of Christmas is the chronography of 354. That's the earliest textual evidence we have of this on a calendar, but it's also the earliest textual evidence we have of the Feast of Sol Invictus. So in all likelihood, the Feast of Sol Invictus was actually made by the pagans as a response to Christianity. The Bishop Hippolytus of Rome explains why Christmas is celebrated on the 25th, and it has nothing to do with some stupid pagan feast. It's because Christians believed that a divine life is perfect, so it's exactly the, a certain number of years. Christ lived exactly for 33 years. And the early Christians understood uh, the conception of Christ to have occurred on Good Friday, which is the day that he died. When you've got the dating of the conception of Christ to Good Friday, then you fast forward nine months later, you get December 25th. And if that coincides even roughly with certain pagan feasts, sure, there, there might be some mythical or pagan celebrations there as well, but Christianity is the true myth. It's not, it's not just a baptizing of certain pagan traditions. It's a thing that really happened. Number three, kissing underneath a mistletoe. This plant is really sacred in a lot of pagan rituals. For Romans, it honored the god Saturn, and to appease Saturn, they would have fertility rituals underneath the mistletoe. In terms of the mistletoe, I don't really, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like, this woman's wrong about everything else, so she's probably wrong about that, but I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. Number four, the Yule Star, in which each point represents one of the five different elements. Pagans used to put this on top of their Yule trees. And lo and behold, uh, we now put stars on top of our Christmas trees, and we have the audacity to call the pentagram satanic. Put, put, a, put a pause there. <laughs> what does the star represent at Christmas time? Uh, symbol of the occult and the devil, or the star that announced. Christmas. The symbol mo probably most associated with Christmas itself. I think it would probably be the latter. Number five, hanging ornaments on trees. Each of these ornaments represented a god like Saturn or even a family's personal patron saints. Number six, decking the halls, wreaths, Christmas trees. Pagans would put these up so that they would have some life and some greenery during the otherwise super cold and lifeless winter. Sure, yeah, that's true. I mean, the image, I was sitting out the other night in my courtyard and I was looking at the dead trees outside and my Christmas tree on the inside with the fire going and the lights on and everything. And I thought, wow, what a beautiful symbol of the incarnation. What a beautiful symbol of Christmas. We are living in this world that has been marked by sin and death and things die and we will die too. Life sucks and then you die. But then you look inside 
And you say, wait, there is hope. There actually is hope and there is life. And there can be life everlasting, like with an evergreen tree. I mean, this is even getting back to her point about the star. Let's not forget the star that announces the birth of Christ is an astrological symbol. Plenty of pagans and occult sort of people looked up to the stars for signs. But because God is the God of the heavens and the earth, and he's the God of everything, he takes that astrological sign and it brings these magi, these non-Christians, non-Jews, over to see the true king, Jesus Christ. Keep going. Seven, Christmas caroling, pagan. Eight, eggnog. What a buzz there. <laughs> Singing is pagan now? The pagans get a monopoly on singing? I don't know, man. Keep going. Nine, Yule log, obviously pagan. Cool. And number 10, my favorite, December 25th being Jesus's birthday. It was celebrated as Dies Natalis Solis Invicti, which means the birth of the invincible son. There she is. Dedicated to Mitra or the Roman soul until it was stolen by Pope Julius I and made into Jesus's birthday. So the birth of the invincible son became the birth of the invincible son. So again, as I mentioned earlier, that's just completely fake. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. That is bullshit. I would defy that woman to show me the evidence that the Feast of the Unconquered Son ever existed, that, that it was ever attested to before the, the celebrations of Christmas. She cannot find it. That, that does not exist. No. But furthermore, to go, to go back to what she was saying, eggnog, pagan, cake, pagan, Donkey. pagan. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you get to claim dairy, alcohol, and sweets as pagan. If those things are pagan, then I guess everything's pagan. He's pagan. He's pagan. You're pagan. I'm pagan. Are there any other pagans I should know about? Meow. With Christmas right around the corner, many of us will be traveling to see our families and loved ones soon. You may find yourself away from home more often than not. That is why I've teamed up with Ring. With Ring security products, you can rest easy knowing that your home and family are safe when you are not there. The Ring doorbell notifies you when guests or packages arrive. Ring's indoor cameras let you keep an eye on kids and pets while you're away. Ring alarm will alert you of any motion detection while the house is empty. Plus, if you add smart lighting around your home, you can turn lights on or off while you're away. Ring's home security products don't just help keep your home and family safe. They make perfect gifts for everyone on your list. Head on over right now to ring.com slash collections slash offers to help Find out how you can live less stressed this season with a Ring product that is right for you. I love Ring. Not only have I gotten Ring myself, but I have given Ring out as housewarming presents to loved ones. You should too. Makes a great, great Christmas present. Head on over to ring.com slash collections slash offers. Did you know that the song Jingle Bells was racist? It was written by a rebellious composer who supported the Confederacy and performed the song in blackface. The songwriter, James Lord. Put a pause there. We just want to put a pause before we get into whatever nonsense he's saying about Jingle Bells. Blackface is not racist. They'll probably get me in trouble with Media Matters for saying that. It's not racist. Blackface itself, the minstrel tradition, is not racist. Some of the most popular performers in minstrel shows of the sort of blackface type of theater were black men themselves. The creators of some of these characters, I think of the, the character Aunt Jemima, was created by a comedian, a minstrel comedian, Billy Kersans, who was a black guy. To say that all this stuff is racist is to erase much of the American theatrical tradition. Oh, please, God. What they would say is everyone in all of history, up until this present moment, every and everyone living today except for me, is a racist. Because by racist, they just mean bad. We're better than you, and we know it. And everything other than them is bad, so that's, that's, that's what they're insinuating. Okay, keep going. The songwriter James Lord Pierpont is the uncle of J.P. Morgan, you know, one of the richest men in America's history. While his father and brother took fiery stands against slavery, Pierpont became the staunch supporter of the Confederacy. Jingle Bell was not always its original name. One Horse Open Sleigh was the name that the composer gave to it. Where did he get the idea from the song, you ask? Although we sing this song during Christmas, it was not intended to be a Christmas song. Some historical accounts report that the tune was first performed for a Thanksgiving service at his church. These performances okay. were performed in blackface. But what is a jingle bell? A jingle bell was a device that was put on the neck of slaves who were the most common to run away during the holiday season. Seeing that it was locked with bells at the end of it, it would jingle as they ran away and give away their location. So this holiday season, uh, be sure you know your historical facts before you sing a song. I'll be doing more of these during the month of December. So look, I, I'm curious. My interest is peaked here. If he wanted to make that persuasive, he probably would have read the alleged original lyrics to the song, right? Because if you say, okay, actually, Jingle Bells 
are not just jingle bells. We all know what jingle bells are. But these jingle bells referred to in the song, there are some secret kind of other jingle bells. And there are these super secret racist ones that you never heard of before, but they are, that's really what he's referring to. You say, okay, what were the lyrics? Because the lyrics now are jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. The bells obviously aren't referring to a slave running away on his feet. It's re- referring to the sleigh. If his argument is, well, no, the song Jingle Bells actually was a totally different song. Well, okay, what are the lyrics? They, but they, I doubt that he could tell me what those lyrics are because I suspect his thesis is bullshit. Somewhat historically dubious. Okay, keep going. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just uh, one thing Here we I go need. again. Oh, hey, buddy. Can you believe it's already Christmas time again? Yeah, about that. Can we dial back some of that Christmas crap this year and maybe share the season? Share? With who? Me. You're all about celebrating a Jewish kid anyway. Santa's Jewish? No. <gasps> so you lied. No, I'm talking about- Lying gets you on the naughty list. There is no naughty list. Exactly what a kid on the naughty list would say. You mean there's Dude, no naughty list? Uh, you're not the only holiday. Thank you. Everyone always forgets it. Ah, easy does it, Kwanzaa. I got this. <laughs> of course you do. I mean, think about it. Seven days belong to him, eight belong to me, and twelve to me. Oh my god. What does God have to do with this? Everything, you stupid, secular son of a- All I want for Christmas <laughs> is you. <sighs> I half love this video because I, I do love that the Hanukkah guy is attacking the Christmas guy for not knowing anything about Christmas. But if his argument is that Hanukkah is on the same par as Christmas, that's just ridiculous. ridiculous. Christmas is celebrated by 96% of Americans. Christmas is a major Christian holiday, one of the most important Christian holidays. Hanukkah is celebrated by about 2% of Americans. But even so, you say, okay, well, just because it's a small number of people who celebrate it doesn't mean it's not important, except it's actually not that important because it's not a major Jewish feast. It's a minor Jewish feast. It would be like celebrating a saint's day, you know, St. Joseph's, the Feast of St. Joseph. I love St. Joseph. It's a great, I love to celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. What is it, March 19th? But it's not on the same par as Christmas or Easter, okay? Likewise, Hanukkah is not on the same par for Jews as Passover, let's say, Sukkot, Yom Kippur, something like that. And then Kwanzaa is a a socialist contrivance that was made up in the 1960s. And it was made up by a Looney Tunes socialist at Cal State Long Beach. He ended up getting arrested for torturing and imprisoning women, falsely imprisoning them. He like hit them on the head with a toaster, put soldering irons in their mouth, all sorts of terrible things. Uh, But it's not celebrated by really anybody. It's celebrated by, I think, 0.2% of Americans. Totally made up anyway. But I did like, it was kind of funny in the video when, when the Hanukkah guy's like, hey, hold on, Kwanzaa. All right, we don't need to hear from you right now. Okay, let's, let's, let's be real. Because it's Hanukkah is way more legit than Kwanzaa. Happy Chanukah. The equivalence that is made between Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa is not about giving Hanukkah and Kwanzaa their due. It's just about attacking Christmas. It's just about tearing down the only actual major feast of the year, okay? And one that is so, so important to American culture as well. That's why we need to take the war on Christmas seriously. The libs always make fun of us for this, for, for getting weirded out when they refuse to utter the word Christmas. They're so, it's, the, it's the holiday that must not be named. Happy holidays? What, ho- what are the holidays? Um, Hanukkah? Do you celebrate Hanukkah? No. Do you know anything about Hanukkah? No. Do you, do you think that Hanukkah is a major feast? I don't, yeah, you don't know, but no. What's the other holiday? Uh, Kwanzaa? Do you know anything? No, no, you don't know. You okay, you don't. It's, it's just Christmas. You just don't want to say it because the culture is turning ever more against Christians. So we can say it. It's okay. Well, I won't say it yet because it's not Christmas yet. I'll say Happy Advent. But when it's Christmas, I will say Merry Christmas.